Hey folks, it's Billy DKY, the truth seeker that simplifies and demystifies. This is going to be UFC 110 post-fight commentary. Basically, we'll start out with who I consider the biggest winners of the night and then go to the who's the biggest losers. And, um, I mean, I think it's obvious that Joe Stevenson versus George Stetteropoulos was the best fight of the night. I mean, George came to win that fight. He come... To put on a show in front of his country, man. And you gotta love the Aussies, man. When they have somebody that's rocking it, it's... Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Just like it was in the World Series of Poker. So, I mean... I really... If I would have predicted this one, which I didn't... I would have predicted that Joe Daddy was just gonna be too much as far as his wrestling goes to handle... I figured he just overpowered George. And George just put on a phenomenal performance. And, you know, he definitely raised his uh, stature in the 155 division. I mean, I'm trying to think who who I'd wanted to see him fight next. And, you know, he, he's got to move up. Because, I mean, he put on a dominant performance over Joe. And, uh, like I say, George came to win. Like I say, dude come to put a show on in front of his countrymen. So... Great job, George Stetteropoulos. The next biggest winner of the night was was Cain Velasquez over Big Nog. I mean, we all knew it was possible that uh, Cain Velasquez was just going to overpower or punch and knock Big Nog out. However, I had predicted that I thought Big Nog would wind up pulling it out. And we all know that Cain's part of the future top heavy heavyweights, which... You know, there's there's still plenty of top competitions. So there's no reason to call Kane out as being the best yet. Because I can think of six guys that I think are stellar heavyweights. Brock Lesnar, Frank Mir, Shane Carwin, uh, Junior Dos Santos, uh, Gabriel Gonzaga, and so, and plus Kane, so that's six. And, um, anyway, I... I, I thought I thought Nog was taking uh, Kane's punches and kicks pretty good until he got into that you know he got in the situation where he got knocked down. I, in some ways, I think they should have let it go just a little bit lo longer since um, Big Nog has such recuperative abilities. But you know, after watching the replay, he was taking you know several good punches. So you got to say good job, Kane. And uh, I, I get you know I, I'm looking forward to his next fight. So. It'll be interesting to see what Kane can do. And like I said, I think Big Nog's really, he's out of the, the mix really at the top top level. So, you know, it makes it makes me think that uh, Frank Mir's knockout over uh, over Big Nog wasn't such an accident after all, you know, due to uh, the sickness, which I'm sure the sickness, you know, had a, had a factor in it. Chris Lytle versus Brian Foster. You know, I don't really have a whole lot to say on that nice submission. It's sort of a, you know, I don't know. I don't have much sound. Vanderlei Silva versus Michael Bisbing. Really, I really expected more out of Vanderlei in this. I really thought Vanderlei was going to come in and knock him out and be more aggressive. But, uh, you know, basically it was a good fight. They, I, I don't know. They seemed, relatively speaking, evenly matched. It, it wasn't like I expected. I expected it to be like the Dan Henderson, Michael Bisbing fight. So, you know, he 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 had a pretty good guillotine on uh, Bisbee there at the last last of the fight. So, Mirko Krokop versus Anthony Parsh. Parsh. Basically, Mirko was a big loser. Even though he won, he to, to have some guy that we've never heard of. He doesn't, you know, he looked like the guy's weight. The, the, his weight that he came in with, he could have easily been at two hundred five. I think like two fifteen or something. Is what he came in is super light. So. For Mirko not to put on an absolutely ass-kicking performance, really to me, just his time in the UFC really is limited. He's never going to be part of the top echelon in the UFC, and it's just the way it is. And, you know, it's nothing personal against him. But uh, he just seemed slow, too. He didn't have all the snapping that he used to have. And Oh, yeah, I want to say something about the Vandalay. Anytime you hear a guy say, well, I'm going to go back to my roots and do it the way I used to do it, Basically, you heard that with Matt Hughes, too, and it just doesn't work. It really is a sign that you know the road's ended, and you think that if I go back to something that I evolved past already, that somehow it's going to work. So, I really don't see Vandalay having... He's not a top guy at 185, and... I mean, he's a top guy, top 10, maybe, but he's not a top 5, per se. He's definitely not going to give any real threat to the to the title, so... 
any, like I said, anytime you hear somebody say that they're going back to their roots, you know, you, a lot of times it's it's a sign that it's over for them. So, you know, maybe Marco's got two more good fights in him, but I think if the other guy would have came in, I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. Anyway, that's enough of that. Keith Jardine versus Ryan Bader. In my opinion, Keith Jardine was the biggest loser tonight because he probably won't be in the UFC after this. I just, I can't see him... He's, you know, he's a good test for people, but he's never going to challenge for the title. You know what I'm saying? He gets knocked out too easy these days. And I'm not really a fan of his awkward style, you know. And I think I heard some other people say, when are you just going to say awkward just means you're uh, you're not really that good? I mean, somewhere along the way you got to say awkward doesn't mean good. So, basically, and one of the things, I really didn't expect Ryan Bader to knock him out in the third round. I expected him to do it in the first round. If he's going to do it, I figured he might power through some stuff. But um, Ryan Bader really needs to learn how to use his energy wisely. He needs to take a page out of uh, Nate Diaz's, or no, Nick Diaz's. I can't remember which one's which now. I think it's Nick. You know how he does those little bitty punches and he conserves his energy and he's always pounding on it. And I really do like that style because basically you're punching punching if you see a guy get a little bit hurt then you can load up on a punch just don't load up wildly you know what i'm saying without really knowing if it's going to connect or not so you gotta say great job ryan bader but he just ryan bader seems to have a lot of weaknesses so i mean he's got a big strength too with the wrestling and hard punch but i just can't see him handling somebody like machida or maybe shogun or john jones i just he's got a lot to learn if he's going to really go to the highest levels so uh anyway that's about all i have to say on it till next time later